the drill by now. And okay, guys, I bought a tool. I'm not quite certain. Um, there's some things about it. It's a, a Hornady concentricity checker and and straightener router, right? And uh, just to give you a very quick, the short story of this thing, I'll probably do a better video about it more. I just got it. It's supposed to. It's supposed to check bullet run out. Right. This is a piece of GP11 ammunition I got stuck in there. It's supposed to check bullet run out. It's got some uh, couple of arm here that you can lock in, change the length, and uh, and then a collet up here that will center the nose. So it's checking the center of the base to the center of the nose in between. See, as opposed to as opposed to my Nico tool that I could set up to check the same way the uh, center of the base from the cutout from the extractor cutout, which I like better, to the nose. See, I think that that outside edge there at the very bottom, I think, is a dirty edge. Um, so I would prefer to go from the uh, I would prefer to go from the cutout where it for the extractor instead anyways So it's supposed to check you turn it, but what's unique about this tool is theoretically It's supposed to allow you to take and apply pressure to the bullet So that you see if I put start tightening up that up It's going to start moving it it's going to start moving that bullet, but you got it there's some variables in this anyways it's supposed to center the bullet so it reduces concentricity meaning less wobble into the down the bore that sort of thing um, it was an interesting idea I'd always been checking my uh, run out with my uh, Nico tool here before but I had no way to change its shape or anything to I didn't have any forcible way to change that, but this tool I do supposedly. So, anyways, I loaded a whole batch of ammunition, uh, and I checked them all on the concentricity checker and straightened them out so that they were three thousandths or less run out at the O give of the bullet. Okay, as you can see, um, you rotate it. And you see this piece of GP11 brass. This thing is just near perfect. You see that? No wonder they shoot so good. Amazing. And on my uh, Nico tool here, I'll bet it's pretty good too. Oh yeah, same thing. Very straight bullet. GP11 brass. No wonder that stuff goes like crazy. All right, man. So that's what I'm doing. I'm this is to check uh, bullet run out and to correct it. That's what this fancy tool is. Now, just to let you know, it's very well made. This base is stronger than hell. Um, it's got a nice lock, a nice arm here. You loosen that up, and this thing will slide back and forth. It's got a nice dial indicator with an arm and a picatinny down here. It's got a picatinny down here without the slots. And I can loosen this, and I can move this this arbor, this head, with a dial indicator wherever I want. See, but you're supposed to do it this way. You spin the bullet and check for run out. So, seems like it's very well made. I'm thinking that because of a couple of variables, like there's a few thousands, there's a few thousands play in this right here, right in this piece right here. You see, this is spring loaded. See that? That is spring loaded there. But in, in this sleeve, there's a few thousands of run out. In it by itself, two to three thousandths run out. Um, so that doesn't help the situation. So it's all kind of a, you kind of got to just start pushing against it and get, kind of push it to a point where you want it. You know, you kind of figure out the pressure. You need to move the dial indicator to and back it off and then check it. I check them over here though. I bend them on this thing and I check them on this thing. I think this is a better test. Okay, so that's why what I'm uh, going to be doing at the range somewhat. As usual, set up at 100 yards. You know that. But today, at the range, it's a really nice day out. Got my buddy Forrest down there trying to figure out a Creedmoor. 
and me, I am going to be running, this is my other private series K31, and uh, of course you guys have all seen and heard the legend of and the, uh, the stories of Hans. Well, this is Hans's younger brother. His name is Franz. So we have Hans and Franz. But Hans is no slouch. Or, I mean, Franz is no slouch. He's a custom build. And I'll show you why here, I think. But uh, it's uh, also Private Series K31. And today I have a little experiment set up. So let's get set up, get ready to shoot, and I'll tell you what we're doing. Okay, guys, so what my little experiment today is, all these rounds here, this should be a pretty good load as far as uh, being um, accurate. It's uh, Nosler 175 grain custom competition bullets on top of 46 grains of 4320. It is loaded into uh, GP11 brass. And these these casings have been sized in my Hornady K31 dies, not my 75x55 competition dies. I want to see if that changes anything or if it extends the life uh, lifespan of the GP11 brass. Um, these are once fired. These have only this is one time reloaded brass right here. This stuff right now is working on its it's actually its fourth shooting. So we'll see how that goes. These were previously sized with the competition dies until this last resizing. And then, but today's experiment is, is that I've got this uh, goofy Hornady tool, a con concentricity checker and fixer upper, which uh, I kind of showed you what it was in the a little bit of video up to this. Um, all these bullets I have taken and And I've uh, corrected, supposedly corrected the concentricity so that the O give of the bullet only has three thousandths of, of an inch run out or less. So, and uh, the difference between these is this is only once fired brass, this is three times fired brass, this I believe will be its fourth try. And then these guys. Are, I left as they are because these guys were had excessive run out in the tune of 15 to 18 thousandths. I didn't try to change those. I want to shoot those as a group by themselves and see if they demonstrate any better or worse accuracy than the rest of them. Interesting little test. And then uh, maybe later, if I get a chance, I brought some GP11 ammunition. Just for sh shits and grins, I might want to swap out my fancy rear diopter here. Of course, this diopter has focus. It basically takes the place of my glasses when I shoot and it's 1.5 magnification and it has optics so I can see the target without using my glasses. I might take this off and use the uh, standard naked diopter, the WNF uh, rear diopter setup. Just uh, a naked diopter, nothing in it, just uh, looking through a little peephole and uh, just see if that affects accuracy really badly or not, I can't imagine it make it any better. But so anyways, let's, uh, I'm going to give that a try. And um, so I'm going to take a first shot. I had to bore sight this whole thing. I put these sights on it um, today and I need to, I, I went through the process of bore sighting it, so we'll see where my first shot goes. Okay, here we go guys. I'm going to start with one of the uh, rounds that was, has already been shot three times. So this is its fourth firing. And uh, let's see where my let's see where my bore sight ends up going here. Good. Let's go. Take a look. See where it went. Hey, it looks like my first shot is on the uh, edge of the black. Um, about seven o'clock. So this thing needs to come up and needs to come right. So, and we need it to go right. About four clicks of windage. We are 
bottom edge of the black circle, 6 o'clock, perfect, it's about perfect windage. Put some upage on it. Give it, I give it eight clicks of windage, or uh, elevation up. I think we're in business there, peeps. I think we're in business. All right, I'm gonna call that good to go. Now I just wanna get a couple of shots in. Just kind of get an idea of what accuracy is like on it. You know I gave it a couple of clicks of uh, windage back to the left in that last shot. That's exactly where it went. I know Franz here is a known accurate rifle. I've shot him before. This is kind of my shooting private series K31. Really nice though, huh? She's a great example. Um, but I know it's this rifle is way more accurate than I am. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's uh, your that's your basic bullseye right there. I, think I like it. Pretty sure that went through one of my other holes in the bullseye. Hmm. That is not too shabby. One more for effect here. Okay, there you go, guys. It's my first shots out of after doing concentricity uh, fixing upping. That was my very first shot off a of bore sight. Made a win uh, an adjustment to the rear sight. Brought windage over, and I brought it up, and I had one, two, I think. There's three rounds right through that hole right there. That's not too bad. I think this thing is a concentricity test so far. It's, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Let's see where it goes from here. As you can see, it's, it's a pretty nice day out today so far. It's a nice fall day. This is from the shooting end. That's my buddy Forrest down there. He's setting up at 100 yards. So I'm gonna head back down. Set my set the camera up here at 100 yards on a fresh target, and let's do some shooting. Okay, boys and girls. Just for your viewing pleasure, let's let the debauchery start. As you can see, I've taken and swapped out my uh, fancy schmancy diopter shooting sight that I normally use for range testing these things with a standard WNF um, rear diopter. It's just a naked diopter, just a peephole. It's adjustable iris though. I have an adjustable iris on it. It's nice. This is a nice sight. These things are worth a shitload of money. Um, so, anyways, I want to see how poorly, or how it changes my uh, my groups by shooting with a naked diopter as opposed to my uh, fancy 1.5 magnification optically enhanced uh, rear Gemin diopter. So let's give it a try here. By popular demand, this is what I'm doing. I'm taking off my fancy rear diopter and put on the standard. WNF uh, rear adapter setup. Um, just a naked iris on it. it is adjustable, so I might fill it with that a little bit. But I'm curious, I'm gonna have to get my glasses. I think to see. Now we. This is my first going back to my first groups. We know that this stuff shot very well. Um, I've been shot 
with uh, open diopters, with naked diopters like this in quite a while. And heck, I don't know. I had to put my glasses on, otherwise I really can't see anything. I have to look at that one, but I think it's on the edge of the black at the bottom. I think. Let's try it again. Boy, that's an eyeful. Yep, I'm pretty darn sure that's where that's going. I think we're going to give it some clicks upage. Maybe. So it was going, definitely going low. I had to bore sight this whole thing again, so we're starting over from scratch. I'm going to try this without my glasses. Maybe that's better. I'm going to open up my iris just a little bit. Okay, we are definitely up. Now we're definitely left. So, let's see, I always get mixed up on which way to move it. That's a bullseye, boys. I'm going to load in two more now. Okay, two more. So I got, I'm going to try to shoot a, a group now. I got it where I think I want it. Not too bad. Put one click of left back in it. Take a look. Not too bad. That one's a little bit off, but like I say, this side is much harder to use. Windage is near perfect. The elevation I have a hard time with. It's very hard for me to see the bottom edge of the circle. another couple in there. That's right in there though. That is right in there. Fancy diopter, no fancy diopter. It's, it's in there. Okay guys, as you can see, here is my, I think my final result on shooting the uh, naked diopters. Of course, this was a shot I did previously, getting my other, my, uh, other diopters sighted in, but with the naked ones, that was my first shot, second shot, did elevation up there, did a windage, and then right here. That was a sighted first shot after I did a, a windage adjustment to see where I was at. 
but here's where I want. There's five shots right there with the naked diopter. That's not too bad. That's comparable to my fancy ones, but when you get down to it, the uh, things that the, the expensive Gemin diopter have just kind of edges it out a little bit. Okay, guys. Me thinks that's pretty much right in there. That's my group with We're just using the plain naked diopters. I don't think that's too bad. Now I'm wondering if I can see the post. Oh yeah. I can see the post. Well, I think I might want to take a few shots. at the post down range. See how these uh, open diopters work with that. Okay, I'll be back. Okay guys, I'm gonna take, I got four rounds left. Naked diopters. Four inch wide steel post, 200 yards. Let's see where it goes. It looked like my, my open, my uh, naked diopter group I just shot at 100 was Maybe a little bit, a little bit to the right. So I actually gave it a, a click of windage. The only way I'm going to know if I hit the post or not is if I hear it, because I have no way other than afterwards looking at the uh, range video. So this is a, uh, it's a little bit harder for me to see. And kind of what I can see is the sun is shining on it. And so I got a, I can see it pretty well. I'm aiming basically my top of my post is pretty much where the, the uh, horizontal and vertical part of that post intersect. I'm counting on maybe a little bit of bullet drop here. Here we go. No hit. Not a hit. Like I say, now I'm pretty much guessing. I know it's going to be in there somewhere. Not a hit. Take one more shot at a hundred here. Just to get my bearings. I want to hit that thing, but I want to make sure where the where the darn thing is going. Let's see. Okay. I think we are, I think we are to the right. I think we're shooting to the right. So, given that, I'm going to give this a little bit of win uh, Kentucky windage here. That's the spot. Yeehaw! Beautiful, huh? I, uh, I like that. You saw how I shot that though. These, these open naked diopters, I don't have quite the sight picture, but they're still effective. Obviously, I like my fancy ones because it actually has a focus and stuff on it. And, um, but these aren't bad either. So Thor's axe, go practice some more.